Washington always has its eye on the next election, and as we get closer to the 2018 midterms, many are predicting a blue wave with Democrats taking back the House and possibly the Senate. Joining us now, New York Congressman Joe Crowley, chair of the House Democratic Caucus and the subject of growing chatter among Democrats as a possible replacement for Nancy Pelosi after the election. He's not going to like me saying that. Congressman, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you. You just heard Larry Kudlow. What do you think of his arguments for potentially, potentially using tariffs against China? And if not that, how do you propose we stop their unfair trading practices. Well, Chris, I'm also a member of the Ways and Means Committee, and so I, I, I do recognize that there's a role for tariffs in our economy. Uh, but I think what really has been created here is a, a, a great deal more chaos. Uh, people really don't know what the president's plan or, or what Mr. Kudlow's plan is as it re relates to China uh, and, and the trade war that has now begun, or at least the initial start of that has begun. And I think that's left a lot of Americans with uncertainty uh, about what this so means what, for them. what should they do? If you're not going to use tariffs, how do you stop the unfair trade practices, the theft of intellectual property? Well, first of all, let me just say for the record uh, that when it came to the issue of China, uh, I did not vote for normal, uh, normal uh, trade uh, uh, with, with China. Um, I, I believe that they were not economically nor politically mature enough to be dealing with this on, on the same par. And having said that, I think that's panned out to be true. Uh, but I do think we have to do this in a much more calculated way and uh, with, with more of a plan. Let the, let, let's have an understanding of what, what the ultimate goal is here. Is the goal to raise uh, the price of products here in the United States or to lower the price of agricultural products here in the United States? What, what is the, the overall goal here? Because that's what some of the effect may very well be if China retaliates uh, in this war. And where is it ultimately going? That's what we don't understand about this. Donald Trump won the presidency because he convinced a lot of voters, including a lot of Democratic voters in the industrial heartland that he had a better idea for how to build the economy, how to get them jobs than Hillary Clinton did. Now Democrats are going into the 2018 midterms with what they call a better deal. Here is Nancy Pelosi on that. Democrats are offering a better deal, better jobs, better wages, a better future. A better deal is founded on strong values that we share, strong values fueled by fresh ideas. Forgive me, Congressman, but that sounds like standard Democratic boilerplate. So give me one fresh idea that Democrats are offering voters for November. Fresh idea? First of all, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Donald Trump did not win by a lot of Democratic votes in the Midwest. Uh, it was fractions of a vote that are actually are responsible for being president of the United States today. Uh, but what I think one great fresh idea is a real infrastructure package for the American people. What the president has offered, a 2080 plan, 20 percent from the federal government, 80 percent from loca local governments, is just not going to wash. It's not going to work. What Democrats are proposing is really an 80-20 plan or a 75-25 uh, plan where the, the, the federal government comes up with the resources for 80 percent and works with local governments to put America back to work and invest in American infrastructure and invest in America. That's jobs. That's a bridge to the, the new economy. That's giving people the opportunity to, to put their kids through college, to afford health care with a real job. That's the kind of message that, that Democrats are talking about. But let's look at the Trump record on the economy, which obviously you agree is going to be the key, key issue in November. Employers are adding an average of 202,000 jobs a month this year. The unemployment rate has been 4.1 percent for six straight months. That's the lowest level in 17 years. And wages are up 2.7 percent, the highest rate in almost nine years. Congressman, a solid majority of Americans, according to the polls, feel good about the Trump economy. Show me how in any of those statistics they differed from any month that President Obama was president of the United States. Well, the, I, no I just difference. said that the 4.1% the is the right, lowest level in 17 it, it, years. It had been moving on a downward trend. But it wasn't 4.1%. Uh, what wage, was it, wage growth wasn't where was up. It, where was it when President Bush left office? President Bush or President Obama? President Bush, when he left office and President, and president Obama became president. Well, I understand. There was a right. recession. So we, and, and, and Democrats really moved us towards this job growth, uh, toward this sustained economy Wait, that we're Are you saying today. that the president and deserves I'm, no? I didn't, I didn't say that. I I'm said, asking. I'm, what I'm suggesting is 
uh, that uh, I believe that the, the, what this is based on is a false premise. The notion of this tax cut is going to, to uh, somehow uh, help the American people in the long run, I think, is a scam. I think what they've done is in their desperate need to pass anything by the end of the year. They ran through a bill without fully really understanding what was in the bill. Uh, it was done in a very, very highly partisan way. And I think in the end, it's, it's the average worker, the middle class in this country, is going to suffer because of the result of that tax cut bill. Let's turn to another subject, immigration. The president has ordered the deployment of up to 4,000 members of the National Guard to the southern border. And the fact is more people are attempting to cross the border illegally. Just take a look at these statistics. In March of 2017, 16,000 people were caught at the border. That number tripled last month, March of 2018, to more than 50,000. Don't we need to stop the surge? I think what we need is comprehensive, comprehensive immigration reform. We've been talking about this for decades, and we just haven't seen it happen, not since 1986. Uh, what I think is interesting, go back to 1986, where you saw a comprehensive immigration reform and comprehensive uh, tax reform done in a bipartisan way. And why it was long-lasting is because it was done both well, Democrats and Republicans coming together. Here we have a, a very partisan approach to this. The president talks about building a wall, that uh, Mexico was going to pay for it. Now he's putting troops down at the border, a very provocative move. But at the same time, it's not really solving the problem. But wait, 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 you say it's a very provocative move. Barack Obama put 1,800 troops at the border. It was, it was to some degree provocative, but not in the same breath that this pre president has done. What the verbiage, the language that our president has used towards immigrants in this nation is really uh, it's abhorrent to me, quite frankly. It's not representative of who we are as a nation. So this president they, making this move is different from any other president doing it, quite frankly. Let's turn to the midterms. President Trump says that your party is vulnerable in November. Here he is. Democrats haven't learned. They still think the loyal citizens who care about jobs and borders and security are deplorable. How confident are you that Democrats will win in November and take back control of the House? We're a long way from November. Well, let's be clear about that. But I'm, I'm confident that the American people want to bring balance back to the United States government. What they see right now is Republicans in charge of the presidency, the Senate, the House, and some would argue uh, the Supreme Court. Every branch of government seems to be controlled in some way or facet by Republicans. But, but and I mean, forget me, that was what voters decided. Well... Look, they have an opportunity here to change course and correction. That's the beauty of our democracy. Uh, the, the House of Representatives, every member of the House of Representatives is up for election this year and a third of the Senate. So the people have the opportunity to bring that balance back. We know that the first midterm election of an incumbent president on average sees 40 seats swing in the opposite direction. Uh, that's not going to happen on its own. Democrats are not going to win that back but just simply by being against President uh, Trump. We need to be for, and as, as I mentioned before, our economic policies, our better deal, and his war deal are going to become very clear to the American people. All right. In more than a third of House Republican or House races, Republicans running for those seats have run ads that go after Nancy Pelosi. Here's an example from the recent special election in Pennsylvania 18. Connor Lamb is a Pelosi liberal. His values aren't our values. Now, that Democrat, Connor Lamb, won, but one of the ways in which he won was that he promised not to support Nancy Pelosi if Democrats take the House and she's up for speaker again. Is Nancy Pelosi a liability for Democrats in this campaign? I think it's more reflective of the fact that Republicans are bankrupt on ideas. They don't have anything else to offer except to go after Nancy Pelosi uh, to, to win elections. That's, if they think that's a winning strategy, they're completely mistaken and wrong. Well, it's well, not but, the winning well, strategy. I mean, forgive me, but... Connor Lamb apparently thought it was an issue because he dumped Nancy Pelosi. Connor Lamb won because he, ro he ran a local election. He talked about the cuts that the Republicans were uh, attempting to make and to privatize Social Security. He talked about what effect local, uh, what effect the federal government has on local politics, on people's lives. And that's why he won that election, not, not because of Nancy Pelosi. If Democrats win the House in November, will you run either to replace Nancy Pelosi if she steps down or against her if she doesn't? Well, on, 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 the, on, on the first uh, portion of that, I would wait and see just what, what, what uh, would happen in terms of that if Nancy Pelosi decided not to run. But if Nancy Pelosi stays, I don't, I, I don't see a scenario by which I would challenge her for that position. Do you want to be Speaker? 
I, look, I, I, I'm focused right now on winning back the House of Representatives to be in the majority, to be the, the chair of the Democratic Caucus in the majority. I'm, I'm doing that job right now. I, I want to be the best chair of the Democratic Caucus I possibly can be, help my colleagues get reelected, and help win back seats for the House Democratic Caucus. That's my focus and goal. That's the focus and goal of the entire Democratic leadership. We are of one mind, uh, Chris, and that is we want to win back the House. That's goal one and the only goal right now. One last question on this. One top Democrat was quoted as saying that at age 56, which you are now, that you are a spring chicken by <laughs> congressional standards. Well, I've had others say that I'm not such a spring chicken after all. Uh, look, at the end of the day, uh, we have a, a very vibrant Democratic caucus. We have some incredibly talented young people. I think of people who are running today, like Mikey Sherrill. Uh, she was a Navy grad. She's, uh, you know, she's running for office in New Jersey. I think of Joe Neguse, who's running in Colorado. I think of Brendan Kelly. Some great people who are running all around this country. Uh, and we're going to be becoming more vibrant uh, as a Democratic caucus. So I, I think we have nothing to look forward to but good days ahead of us. Congressman Crowley, thank you. Thanks for coming in today. Please come back, sir. I'm happy to come back. Thank you.